introduction of Big Bad by Alex Strum. Just a couple reminders before we begin. In case of emergency, there's three emergency exits, two behind you and one backstage. And also, please make sure to have all cell phones turned off as it may disturb our cast and crew. Also, a quick disclaimer. We, are, we have received permission to perform without our masks on, but it's important to make sure that all your masks stay on throughout the performance, covering your mouth and nose. Now, without further ado, please enjoy the show. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, you never know. Uh, anything you'd like to tell the viewers out there? 
I got nothing to say to the world, the world's got nothing to say to me. Okay then. All right, Grand Judge Washwoman! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they say that justice is blind. Well, if justice is blind and bats are blind, then justice must be a bat, eh? <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the renowned judge, wise old man, is presiding over the case today. Judge Man is known for his, well, wisdom, and frequently apply his gifts as a philosopher to any case. He's also known for his taste in magic beans. In this court today, we are here to try an individual accuse of many penis acts. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have to ask you to keep in mind this important and difficult concept through the man going out of his trial. This concept is that guilty is the opposite of not guilty, and not guilty is the opposite of guilty. That's it. Very well. <laughs> Shall we begin? Your Honor, sir, uh, I don't have the counsel. What? Oh, yes, of course, counsel. Well, where's your counsel? Why is it not here? Did you lose it? Did you check your pockets under the seat cushions to find the refrigerator? No, but, uh... Why? You don't have a refrigerator? How do you get them fresh? It's not fresh. <laughs> ah, Lord, yes. Who is that? Oh, <laughs> that's a lot of fun. This evil stepmother? I apologize for honor everyone for my business. Excuse me just a minute. Well, just stand there. Again, I apologize to everyone. May I inquire as to why you're a lay counselor? Um, you know, I would come up with an excuse, but really, forget about it. I don't do pro bono work, so I'm not all that excited about this case, to be honest with you. Plus, I think it's pretty much doomed to failure, so I didn't really prepare a whole lot, and I was kind of pulling some things together last minute. So I thought I'd sleep in a little and treat myself to a nice long breakfast with my witness and colleague over there. <laughs> so, um, are we going to get this thing started? I've got a facial schedule about five. Yes, of course, right away. Objection! The trial hasn't even started yet. Your Honor, I object to the court for the defendant's attitude. Clearly, she's making a mockery of this courtroom, and you are allowing it. Oh, I am? Oh, uh, well, that's not good. Um, Mrs. Stepmother, um, a bit of wisdom for you. Being late is wrong. Wrong is the opposite of right. Right is the opposite of left. Therefore, if you are late, I have to ask you to leave. Now, court is in session. Oh, opening remarks, Miss Godmother? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, today we are here to protect a grave injustice. By chance, Mr. Wolf was spared the punishment he rightfully deserves. This depraved criminal has lurked in force for years, preying on innocent little girls. Yeah, I must tell behave yourself. Innocent little girls, innocent little boys, innocent little old men, innocent little women, innocent little pigs, and innocent little sheep. My clients have been frightened, threatened, tricked, eaten, and robbed, and I am sure I am leaving something out. Because of a mere incident, this twisted fiend will not receive the punishment he deserves. So we must take from him everything we can. That beast over there has left my clients with nothing. So we must take from him everything he has. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Godmother, Miss Stepmother. Oh, um, no, I wave it. What? Yeah, you heard me. No statement. Thanks, though. Very well. Moving on. You're not going to try? You're not going to do anything for me? Look, Wolfie, nobody's going to save you. And even if somebody were going to, it sure wouldn't be me. I'm doomed. I'm going to be raw blind. Come on, you did all of it, didn't you? Yeah, but why won't anybody understand? Miss Gunmother, call your first witness, please. Understand what? What it's like. What it's like to have everyone hate you. I call the stand Miss Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, and maybe I do. What was that? Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, Hans Christian Anderson. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Red, honey, how are you, dear? I'd be a whole lot better for that monstrous cash. Right, right. Well, now, Red, sweet. Why don't you tell the nice people on the jury what exactly happened between you and Mr. Wolf on the day in question? Yeah, sure thing. Well, you see, I was walking through the woods, minding my own business. I'm trying to get to my granny's house to 
make her some bread because she's old and sick and stuff. When this horrible scale walked in front of Noah and pretended to be all nice and stuff. But I knew he was creepy, so I was like, back off, fool. And he was like, no, come on. I'm a nice shortcut when I went to get you a granny sauce. And I was like, well, actually, I hate, I love shortcuts. I hate walking. It's for losers. I guess this wolf would just make up some shortcut or whatever. So I start walking. Turns out the freaking wolf did make it up. He gave me like a lot cut or something. Your Honor. Where did that come from? 
Hey baby, I said I didn't work too hard on this case. It doesn't mean I'm still not the best there is. And besides, maybe I like you a little bit all of a sudden. What a stunning turn of events. This case may prove to be more of a battle for Miss Fairy Godmother than she had planned. Oh, shut up! <laughs> the witness is excused. Did you care to call another witness, Miss Godmother? Yes. I call to stand Mr. Bill Woodcutter. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you? Hans Christian Anderson? I do indeed. Thank you, Mr. Woodcutter. Now, would you mind telling the court what it is you do? I'm a woodcutter. I could work. I also compete in lumberjack pageants. I just want best in flannels and... Yes, and as part of your job, <laughs> you're licensed to carry an axe. Is that correct? Yes, I certainly do. And you are licensed to use that axe in case of emergency, are you not? I am. In fact, is it not part of the woodcutter's code? You must always respond to innocent people in need. It is part of the code, and I uphold that part of the code. So, in other words, when you encounter an emergency in the woods, you are required to respond quickly and courageously. Yes, I am. And so you did, sir. You are a true hero, sir. Well, thanks, you, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Mr. Stepmother? Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Woodcutter, let's talk about this Woodcutter's code, shall we? Okay. How do you know when there's an emergency in the woods that you need to respond to? Well, it depends. But usually if I see something that looks wrong, I respond to it. I see. You see it then, do you? Well, now, Mr. Woodcutter, what exactly prompted you to enter Mrs. Hood's cottage on the day in question? There's nothing in the police report about why you went in. Did you hear a scream? Oh, uh, no. Not exactly. Did you see the defendant enter the house and become suspicious? No. I... Uh, okay, I was snooping around the house. <laughs> snooping? <laughs> Whatever for? I was looking for a pie to steal off the window seat. And why ever would you do that? I thought you were a hero. Could you we don't pay so good? That's what I do the pageant. But you only make the big money you win the first prize. I haven't done that yet. I was hungry. And while you were trying to steal something, you happened to see in the window what exactly? I see that there was right there in the whole lady's bed in her clothes, licking his chops. Well, all right then. Well, how did you know, Mr. Woodcutter, and I mean absolutely know for sure that my client had eaten your friends and that you were justified in cutting him open? Because that is what you did, isn't it? You cut my client open with an axe, didn't you? Yes, I did. How do you know? Couldn't my client have simply been a friend of Mrs. Hood's that you didn't know? One who occasionally likes to wear her nightgown? How do you know that he had eaten them and that the two women weren't simply in the other room? Well, uh, he is a wolf! Oh, so you just got to come open them because he's a wolf? Yes! No other reason. No! No further questions, Your Honor. Another stirring cross-examination from Miss Evil Stepmother. This is interesting. Shut up! Uh, why don't we go to commercial? <laughs> Ms. Gumbel, call your next witness. I call to stand the three little pigs. Objection! You can't call three witnesses at once. Your Honor, it is imperative to my case that the witnesses testify as one. It is? Well, no, but they insist on testifying together. Why is that? Your Honor, May I approach the bench? Well, this is unorthodox, plus also, counselors, why don't you join us? What is it? Uh, my siblings are, uh, not exactly competent to testify without me. What do you mean? <laughs> They're, uh, immature? No, you can say it. They're stupid. <laughs> They're they too stupid. Oh, I see. Well, I see no problem, Mr. Stepmother. Oh, um, I think I'm fine with that. Very well. The three little pigs, please take the stand. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you? 
Hans Christian Anderson? Who? What? Yes. Good enough. <laughs> now, would you please state your names for the court? Huh? Tell them nicely your name. Oh, my name's Oneg. <laughs> Oneg. Don't you mean- Don't worry about it. <laughs> my name is Twelve. My name is Three. Thank you. Now, <laughs> Oneg. What happened to your house? My house? My house. Oh, I built a house, but then it fell over. Now I live in a new house. <laughs> How did your house fall over? A fox blew it down. <laughs> a fox? Are you sure it wasn't a wolf? Ah! What's a wolf doing here? He's gonna hop and pop and eat me! No, no, it's fine. Calm down. Calm down. Is that the creature? that flew down your house. Yeah, that's the box that did it. <laughs> now, 12. 12. Huh? What? what? Yes. Did that creature flow down your house? No, I live in a nice house with one and three. We have a kitchen and a fireplace. No, no. Your first house. Did he blow down your first house? Oh, my first house. Why didn't you just ask me? <laughs> yeah, it was that guy. That wolf, right there. Wolf? Wolf? Where? No, no, it's mine. You're safe. Now, three. Would you mind stating your story for the court? Gladly, my dear lady. You see, my siblings and I had always lived together until last year, when we decided to leave our parents and our childhood home and build our own home. Not too far from each other, but far enough to grant ourselves a reasonable amount of independence. I see. Well, one day, that blasted, bloated, maniacal wolf came around and blew down both of my siblings' homes. They had to come and live with me out of fear that he might eat them. We are also frightened for such a time as he lurked outside our home. We barely ate, we barely slept, and our personal hygiene went to the dogs. Look at all the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I got shaved in weeks. You poor dear. You poor dear. Yes, it was abominable. Ladies and gentlemen, these poor pigs were so frightened that they couldn't even shave. He, he said he would huff and puff and blow our houses down. And he called us little pigs. Doesn't everyone? Well, yes. But he said it in a really mean, nasty sort of way. That made me think he was trying to demean us. It hurt my feelings of mine. <laughs> Your Honor, I... Well, I have no further questions. I am too outraged with the defendant's behavior. Very well, Miss Godmother. I have a seat. Miss Stepmother, your witnesses. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, okay, tell me something. I want you to try to pick on my own feet. What? <laughs> I told you something. Uh, no, I want you to tell me what your first house was made of. My first house? Remember? The one you just told us about? Oh, yeah. Straw. Straw. And you both? And me. Oh, I am not kosher. What? <laughs> no, I don't want you to just tell me something. I want you to tell me what your first house was made of. But that has nothing to do with me not being kosher. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. That's okay? Yes. Now, what was your first house made of? Sticks. Sticks. And you three? What is the house in which you all currently reside in? The one you constructed. What is that? Brick. And it hasn't blown over by means of wolf or anything else now, has it? Nope. And I assume it's up to all of the building codes. Of course. What do you take me for? Now, Pri, what about your siblings' former homes? Are straw and sticks building materials approved by the zoning board? No, they are not. I didn't think so. Do you think your siblings' homes would have lasted long in, say, a, a hurricane or a tornado or in a light breeze? No, I do not. But they're all very safe and cozy now, aren't they? Yes, they are. Uh, now, I have just one more thing. Yes? Did my client ever say he was going to eat any of you? No. 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 So how do you know that's what he was trying to do? How do you know he wasn't just trying to make sure all your homes were safe and secure? 
Well, no further questions, Your Honor. Three little pigs, I mean witnesses, are excused. No further questions, Your Honor. 
Wow, you sure are something. You know, my friend, he may not be as bad as we thought. Miss Stepmother, any further witnesses? Yes, I'd like to call an expert witness to the stand. The renowned psychiatrist, Miss Muffet. She's a top wool specialist in her field with years of hands-on experience in the deep, dark woods. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you? Hans Christian Anderson? Mm, I don't like swearing. I'm afraid you must, Miss Muffet. Oh, all right then. Yes, I swear. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you may be seated, Miss Muffet. Oh, um, no. Pardon me? <laughs> I, I, um, I, I need a tuffet. A what? A tuffet, sir. She needs a tuffet. <laughs> yes, well, someone could fetch a tuffet, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. She's a bit neurotic, but I promise she's the best psychiatrist around. If you just had a tough fit anywhere, what is taking so long? Uh, Miss Muffet requires a uh... a tough fit. I cannot sit without a tough fit. Well, like I always say, there's no such thing as good psychiatry without a sturdy tough fit. <laughs> what is all a good and decent? I think she's made it up. Why don't we just have her stand? Very well. Miss Muffet, the state is unable to provide you the said tuffet. Do you mind standing? My legs are so tired, I need a tuffet. Please. Well, this is getting ridiculous. Just sit down! Ah, I'm a spider! I'm a spider! Ah, I need to hurt away! I need to hurt away! I need them so badly! The great thinker once said, Cruise away, your day is okay. <laughs> In any case, I apologize for the behavior of my witness. May I simply call my final witness? Yes, of course. I call Mr. Bake B. Wolf.
The courtroom was thrown into chaos here today as the renowned psychiatrist, Miss Muffet, revealed her true identity as the adoptive sister of the accused. <laughs> Miss Fairy Godmother delivered a brief closing statement in which she restated the facts brought out by her witnesses. For the defense, Miss Evil Stepmother stated that Mr. Wolf had not been born a villain, but made one, simply because the society in which he lived had viewed him as such. And if the jury were to show him some compassion, the first he had ever known, his ways might begin to change. I'll take you back to the courtroom now, ladies and gentlemen, where the jury is about to deliver its final verdict. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'd like you to give us a verdict. But they haven't even left the room. We don't have time for that. Nobody likes jury duty. All those lawyers yapping away, those witnesses crying, and those judges. Ha! Go get me started. You're not going to send them out to deliberate? No, we'll just have them clap. It's much easier, don't you think? Now, Mr. Gentlemen of the jury, I'm going to need your help. But before I ask you for a decision, I have some words. Words that might help you along the way. Like a wise philosopher once said, juries are like submarine sandwiches. They are best with mayo and hot peppers. <laughs> now, Mr. Gentlemen, are you ready? No matter what happens, I just want to say thanks. You know, kid, I'm just glad I got forced into this case. I know where you're coming from, and I really need to talk to my stepdaughter. When I raise my gavel, I would like everyone who is defendant is guilty. That's guilty with the J. <laughs> <laughs> With the G, <laughs> and when it thinks the defendant, Mr. Big Bad Wolf, is guilty, I'd like you to applaud now. <laughs> very good, very good now. When I raise my gavel again, I'd like everyone who believes the defendant is innocent. That's innocent with the, uh, everyone who believes the defendant is innocent, I'd like you to applaud now. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Thank you. 